Welcome everyone. In AP Physics, you are going to run into numbers quite a lot. Whether you are doing a calculation for a homework problem, if you're doing a uh, lab activity on an exam, there's a lot of math going on in this class. And therefore, when you get a result, whether it's from a lab making a measurement and doing calculations or just a numerical problem from a textbook, how and why are we going to round our answers? What's going to be our approach? So that's what I'm talking about in this video. Now, when we do a math problem, again, whether it's homework on a test or if we're doing some kind of measurement and therefore computation during a lab or other activity, all we're going to do is round to a couple decimal places at the end. That's it. The rule is there's not really a hard set rule. We are not going to worry about significant figures, sig figs. If you don't know what those are, don't worry about it because we're not going to use them. We are also not going to go by the mantra that some use that is always round to three decimal places. We're not going to do that either. And I really actually want to talk about that last part and why it is that we're not going to follow a basic always go to three decimal places kind of rule. I'm going to do that with a story. Let's say we're in a classroom, all right, a science classroom, and we have the teacher over there on the left, and they pose a problem. On the whiteboard, it says, what is the length of the room in meters? All right, so it's kind of like a really simple lab or a uh, real quick activity, and they're just going to call on a single student, and maybe they call on a student who looks like they're not paying attention. They say, all right, go ahead. We're going to watch, figure out the length of the room in meters. And oh man, this kid is a, is a little confused because they weren't paying attention. Maybe they didn't listen when the teacher mentioned where the meter sticks are, so they look to the left for something to measure. They look over there to the right for something to measure. They look back. Oh my gosh, they're not finding the meter sticks, but oh, they see on the floor just a stick. So in their mind, they look at the stick and they're like, okay, that looks like it's about one meter. Fantastic. This is the kid thinking. So the kid is going to take that stick. Of course, they go to one far wall of the room. They lay that stick down and they count in their heads one. And then they move over a little bit and they move the meter stick to the next position, being very careful, and that's two. And they continue this process all the way across the room from one side of the other until they get to the far side. But when the student gets to the far side, there is a problem. The problem is they've counted up four, five, six, seven, eight sticks, four, five, six, seven, eight meters. But at the very end, that last little bit where there's a question mark, the stick doesn't fit. It's not exactly one perfect stick length, but okay, the kid's pretty smart. They think, hmm, looks like it's one third of the stick that's left, that little question mark area. So the student is thinking, all right, that's about one third of a meter. So the student goes back over to the teacher and the whiteboard, and what do they write on the whiteboard? It was eight sticks, and then they estimated a third. 8.333 meters. That's based on their activity and based on what they learned to always go to three decimal places. Always, always, always. Well, let's think about that. Okay, let's think of this number, 8.33. The first thing is it's not really a number. That's actually the first key idea. This is a science class. This was a measurement that was done. This 8.33 is a measurement. That's eight meters 33 centimeters and 3 millimeters. That was the result the student got. Or read another way, 8 meters and 333 millimeters. Not 334 millimeters, not 332 millimeters, 333 three, three millimeters. So based on that, based on this activity, do you think that is a good result for this science class? No, this is a terrible scientific answer. Even though they follow that methodology, that mantra of always going to three decimal places. And here's why. Science is different than math. The decimal places in science represent something. They are meaningful in and of themselves. They represent the confidence in your result. Also, the accuracy in whatever material you were using uh, to make those measurements. Think of all the simplifications or mm, estimations that the student had to do. One, they just picked a stick and they thought it was close to a meter, but obviously it wasn't an exact meter stick. They just made an approximation. So the accuracy of that measuring device is already called into question. Also, their methodology. I'm not saying it's bad to make an estimate, but this is not reflected in their final answer. They made an estimate that it's about a third of the meter stick left. So therefore, writing down 8.333 meters 
is implying something that is not inherently true based on the science of what was done. That number with three decimal places is implying that the student knows the length of the room to the thousandths of a meter. Again, 333 millimeters. That's not simply true. Another example to try and get this point across. Let's say you're driving. You're in a truck. All right, you're driving and you're about to approach a bridge and you see a sign on the bridge and that sign says max weight, the maximum weight that the bridge can hold, 34.422 tons. And you're in that truck and you know because you weighed the truck after your, uh, your pickup that your truck is 34 tons. Based on that sign, maybe you think, oh, my truck is 34 tons, so obviously that's less than that three decimal place signage, so they should be able to make it. Versus the same scenario, now the sign says max weight 34 tons. Oh, well now the person or you think, hmm, my truck is 34 tons. It's matching that sign. This is risky, or maybe the truck's not gonna make it. Now, I know I picked a pretty extreme example, right, where the numbers are so close. But nevertheless, the top sign, whether they meant to or not, the engineers, whoever wrote up that sign, that top sign is implying having more knowledge, more certainty than the bottom sign, all based on how the rounding took place. So if three decimal places, if that rule isn't to be followed, what is the better way to go about it? Well, look at that top orange number I have right here. This approximately, that's what that uh, tilde kind of represents, about eight meters. That's not bad. Here is something else, another way it could be represented. Eight meters plus or minus, this is kind of giving you the range of values. Plus or minus one meter. That's saying that the person measured about eight, but it could be as low as minus one, seven, or as big as plus one, nine. So they measured based on this stick and these approximations between seven and nine meters. That's pretty good. Or maybe right here, they had a smaller range, eight meters plus or minus 0.5. Now, what's the right answer between these two? To be honest, there isn't one. It's entirely based on the scenario, based on the equipment that was used or based on the methodologies or the approximations that the student or the lab was able to carry out. But either way, this 0.333, this three decimal place rule, it overestimated the actual uh, method that was used to measure and get a final result. Now, it's not always going to be an overestimate. Maybe the kid actually busted out because he had it, uh, he or she had it in their backpack, a laser interferometer which uses lasers and advanced calculation devices to be able to measure distances within a nanometer, 0. 0.00000, that's eight zeros and then you're one, that's a nanometer. So if that was the case, if they use this interferometer and they got a measurement of 7.963384001 meter, well, if they did that three decimal place rule and all they did was write down 7.963, well, they just underestimated how accurate their experiment really was. They just did a disservice to them. They should get more credit than is actually being allotted to them. So having just a rule of always three decimal places in science doesn't make any sense because these decimal places are telling us how accurate we believe our experiments are. There's no problem with doing an experiment and getting a result of eight meters plus or minus one as long as you're being honest about it, so to speak. As long as you're saying, hey, we only had this stick to go off of and we had to kind of estimate at the end of that room. This is a fine answer, all right? You're being honest in this case with how poor or how good your experimental devices were, how good you were able to measure things. Just like this, this isn't inherently better all right, unless you're saying that accuracy is everything, which is not necessarily the case, but it's all about honestly representing how confident you are in those results. So here's our conclusion. This always round to three decimal places, fine. It's okay with math. It is not okay for science. It doesn't make sense in science because again, that decimal place that represents how true you think your answers are. Now, sig figs, again, if you know them, sig figs solve a lot of the problems that I just talked about. So you might think, hey, we should use sig figs. Well, sig figs do solve some of those problems, so they're good. They're not perfect. They have flaws in and of themselves. 
And also, the College Board doesn't require sig figs. So let's not spend any time memorizing, learning sig figs, and making sure we use them if they have their own flaws and the AP exam isn't going to require you to use them anyway. So let's just make it simple. Let's round to one to two decimal places. Either of those answers right there is fine. Very last slide, the only thing you are to never do is decimal diarrhea. You do not just go on and on and on and on and it's like it never ends and you're going to be there forever. You should not be blindly copying all the decimals that pop up on your calculator. That bottom thing, that's the worst you can do. There's no science equipment that's available in a high school science class that's going to get you that accuracy all the way down to that one over there. So if you're just blindly copying what's on your calculator, that just makes us think that you don't understand what's actually happening. Just round to one or two. All right, thanks for watching.